bless everyone. Good afternoon. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the best greeting you ever gonna get. The, the greeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the name of Jesus Christ is above every other name. There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. There is no power greater than the power of the Lord. So again, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ is the name of the Son of God. <laughs> God bless you. The name of Jesus Christ is um, the best thing that's ever happened to humanity. Well, there's no magic man in the sky. I don't know about the sky, I know about heaven. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, is seated in the right hand side of the Father in heaven. I don't know about the sky, but I know about heaven. <laughs> Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand side of the Father. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's alive forevermore. Matthew 28 says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Don't be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord is lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead behold he goes into Galilee and there you shall see him Lord I have told you so you see Jesus Christ didn't just rise from the dead he actually predicted that he was going to rise from the dead he actually prophesied that he was going to rise from the dead. He gave details about his, the manner of his death, how he was going to die, who was in, going to, to be involved in the death, how long he was going to be dead for, and he also gave a prophecy regarding his resurrection. That's what you call prophecy predicting the events in detail before they happen and that's what Jesus did with his resurrection he just didn't rise from the dead accidentally without people knowing no again and again Jesus took his disciples aside and he says to them I will be crucified when I go to Jerusalem the chief priests and the elders of the people are going to reject me they are going to do all manner of evil to me they will crucify me i will be buried but on the third day i'm going to be risen from the dead Hallelujah. amen that's what jesus said to his disciples so when jesus was risen from the dead his disciples god bless you god bless you his disciples remembered that Jesus had said, I will be risen from the dead. Praise the Lord. So you see, this man called Jesus Christ, who, by the way, is also 100% God. Yeah, man, you good, bro. Yeah, man. Bless you, brother. This man called Jesus, 100% human being, 100% God predicted in great detail his own crucifixion imagine that the man tells you how he is going to die Jesus Christ predicted how he was going to die 
how he was going to be risen from the dead. That's what you call a prophet. And Jesus was more than a prophet. Jesus was the son and is the son of God. And how you know that Jesus is the son of God? Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is what marks him aside, is what separates him from everybody else who has ever come in the name of this God or the other. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. <laughs> Jesus is risen from the dead. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is good news for you. Because if Jesus Christ, since Jesus was risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, God is saying to you that the very same Holy Spirit by whom Jesus was risen from the dead, that very same Holy Spirit is available to you. That's good news. Huh? So for that reason, I plead the blood of Jesus into the foundations of the town of Odom. For that reason, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on behalf of every man, woman and child within the borders of Odom. For that reason, I speak the blood of Jesus Christ and I apply the blood of the Son of God even upon every doorpost of every family within the borders of Oldham. I poured the blood of Jesus into the foundations of Oldham. I poured the blood of Jesus Christ into the very pillars of Oldham. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ to every gate in Oldham for the triumphant entry of the word of God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for mass evangelism. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for deliverance. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for anointing and power. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ to remove the spiritual scales from off the eyes of people that the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the light thereof might shine into the souls of the people. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ even upon every man, woman and child within the reach of the sound of my voice. I plead the blood of Jesus into the spirits of men that the spiritually dead might hear the voice of the Son of God that the spiritually dead should live again. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ so that those that are looking for healing might find their healing in the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ so that those that are spiritually bound, those that are in the captivity of Satan, those that are bound by demonic spirits might be set free from the power of the enemy. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ so that those that are terminally ill, those that are looking for healing should find their healing in the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for the knowledge of the Son of God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for the entrance of the Word of God into the hearts of the men and women of the town of Oldham. I plead the blood of Jesus that the captives might be set free in Jesus' name. Jesus name I plead the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is as alive is alive today as it was 2,000 years ago I plead the blood of Jesus Christ that those who have not been to the cross of Jesus might come to the cross of Jesus for forgiveness of sins to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ to be set free from the guilt of sin to be set free from the ills that plagues humanity today I plead the blood of Jesus. I break spiritual barriers by the blood of Jesus. I pull down principalities and powers by the blood of the Lamb of God because the blood of Jesus is that answer humanity is looking for in Jesus name. So Jesus is risen from the dead. 
the women have gone back to the tomb they meet the angel of the Lord the angel of the Lord says I know you're looking for Jesus but you're looking for Jesus Christ in the wrong place Jesus Christ is not among the dead Jesus Christ is now risen from the dead that's what the angel of the Lord was saying to these women when they went back to the tomb to see um, what had transpired um, and to take care of the grave of Jesus but the thing is Jesus was risen from the dead so the angels are correcting these women are saying listen don't be afraid I know you're looking for Jesus but Jesus Christ is not among the dead he is risen from the dead he is alive now the angel of the Lord says go and tell his disciples that Jesus is alive now you see every other so-called holy man they came and died and they remain dead if you want to find them you find them among the dead they are gurus who've come and who've proclaimed that they were speaking on behalf of God but when they died they remain dead so if you want to find them they are among the dead there are prophets who've come and who say that they were speaking on God's behalf but when they died they remained dead so if you want to find them they are among the dead but when it comes to Jesus Christ you cannot find Jesus among the dead because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead they crucified him at nine o'clock in the morning by three in the afternoon he's still on the cross they took his body down they buried him he was in the grave for three days stone cold dead in that grave for three days but on the third day Jesus Christ rose from the dead when Jesus Christ was risen from the dead what that means for you is this Jesus rose from the dead to raise humanity from spiritual death to raise humanity from being spiritually dead might come as a shock to you but just because the body is alive doesn't mean that the spirit in the inside is alive a lot of people are spiritually dead and how you know that a person is spiritually dead is when that person senses no connection with the true and the living God that's how you know you're spiritually dead when you have no connection at all with the true and the living God when the life of God is not flowing into your own spirit you know you're spiritually dead when you don't hear the voice of God you know you're spiritually dead when you don't have any confidence to go before God and pray and know that God has heard your prayer you know you're spiritually dead when you don't have a relationship with the true and the living God as your father through what Jesus Christ did on the cross you know you're spiritually dead so just because the physical man is alive doesn't mean that the spiritual man is alive the spiritual man died in the garden of Eden when Satan decided to when Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God through the deception of Satan when God made man he made perfect humanity there was no hatred there was no aggression there was no sin there was no headache there was no low self-esteem there was no addiction there was no self-harm there was no suicide there was no families breaking down there was none of those evils that we see plaguing humanity today when God made man and put him in the garden of Eden man had it all good but Satan came in and Satan lied and deceived Adam and Eve into thinking that they could live their life without God and yet when God made man he made man in such a way that man cannot live without God God 
said let us make man in our image after our likeness so you were created in the image of God you were created after the likeness of God God is love God is life God is light God is righteous and holy that's the image of God that you were created in. when God created humanity he created humanity in the image of Jesus Christ because Jesus is the image of the invisible God because Jesus Christ is the ex is the is the is the first begotten from the dead so when sin came through the deception of Satan spiritual death came into the spirit of man even though the man was still physically alive spiritually the man was dead because instantly man disconnected himself from the love of God he disconnected himself from the light of God man disconnected himself from the life that God gives when Adam and Eve took of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil they straight away disconnected themselves from the true and the living God that's how humanity became spiritually dead that's why people die if you ever wondered why people die this is the reason because you see humanity was never meant to die this is why you, you feel sad when you lose your loved ones this is why we feel sad when relationships break down when we lose our loved ones whether it's through divorce falling out or whether they pass away you know uh, I will feel um, sad because humanity was never meant to experience any of those things you were never meant to die you were made in the image of an eternal and an immortal God so humanity was never meant to die this is why you would do everything within your power to preserve your life because God put that instinct in you you were never meant to die so spiritual death now came into humanity and with that followed also physical death This is the reason why Jesus came Jesus came to die in our place because God said to Adam and Eve from the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you will surely die and when God was saying that to Adam and Eve he was saying that to the rest of humanity because the rest of the human race the entire human race was in Adam and Eve at that particular time so when God said to Adam and Eve do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he was saying that to you and me it doesn't matter whether you have an African surname like myself you are a son of Adam you come from Adam it doesn't matter whether you have an English surname you still come from Adam the whole human race comes from Adam and when God say to Adam the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you will surely die God was referring and he was saying that to the whole human race straight after that you see Cain and Abel we all know about the story of Cain and Abel brothers killing each other and then after that we all know about the grandson of Cain uh, the grandson of Cain called Lamech who committed murder as well and from that time it has been downhill from that time it has been chaos from that time there has been a dark cloud over humanity because of the rebellion of Adam and Eve the spiritual death that came into um, the human race was extended to everybody through the scene of Adam and Eve the next thing after Adam and Eve after Adam and Eve have sinned against God you see them hiding from God you see them hiding among the trees and it's the same thing that people do today people will hide from the truth people will hide from the gospel I thank God that he's sending out his evangelists I thank God that he's sending out his preachers and the preachers are coming to seek the lost the gospel of Jesus Christ should is good news and because the gospel of Jesus is good news that ought to make you happy because what God is saying is that listen the very same power by whom Jesus Christ was risen from the dead is available to you today 
people are looking for answers right people have life questions right everybody have their own questions either about life questions about why am i here questions about what am i doing here questions about who am i questions about is there life after death questions about who is the true and what which one is the true god all kinds of questions people are seeking for answers People are looking for answers and some of the questions are like how do i know that god loves me after what i've gone through considering the drama and the pain and the heartache and the heartbreak that i've gone through i how do i know that god loves me that's a question people are seeking for answers but you know what the angel of the lord said the angel of the lord said i know you seek jesus you see, God is already telling you where to look. Because God is a loving God. God's got nothing but love for you. He's already telling you where to look. God is saying to you, I know you have answers, I know you have questions. But I know you're seeking for Jesus. I know you're looking for Jesus. I know you're looking for Jesus Christ because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. There's no other person who's ever risen from the dead. There's no other person who's ever conquered the power of the grave. There's no other person who's annihilated of the power of the grave except Jesus. Humanity's number one fear is the fear of death. People are afraid of dying. That's why Jesus rose from the dead on your behalf. So that you don't have to be afraid of this thing called death. So the angel of the Lord said, I know you're looking for Jesus, but Jesus Christ is alive. You're looking for Jesus among the dead, but Jesus is alive. You don't look for Jesus Christ among the dead. Jesus is alive. After three days, Jesus was risen from the dead. And when Jesus was risen from the dead, he showed himself to many people with many infallible proofs for 40 days. At one time, Jesus Christ appeared to 500 people at once. One time, he appeared to 500 people. 